Episode 44, revving at full throttle. We've been doing a lot of that lately. It's been a long time, huh, Al? Yeah. So, uh, I saw Panaco recently. She told me about your body. Oh yeah, Al wasn't there that time. <laughs> well, this is awkward. Hey, there he is. <gasps> Mr. Ho, you think Mr. You can Ho in for a bit? Yeah, sure. Um, let's catch up later. Oh, okay. Hohenheim's acting all casual, but I know he's he's working on something right now. He's sticking around for a reason. Maybe it's Rose. Job fixing up this old radio. It works better than it used to. It doesn't even pick up stuff. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Damn, feels like so long ago. Memories. I'm really sorry. All this bad stuff happened because we stuck our noses in. Mm, don't say that. No. You've got to look at all the good stuff that's come from it. You guys exposed to corrupt fraud. People reacted badly at first, but take a look. It had to come out eventually. Sounds good, huh? And look at Rose. The town's working together to rebuild what we lost. And you guys are the ones that brought us together. This is so nice. Al really needs this. I'm gonna help build. Rose, can you take care of Winry? Take care of Winry? What do you mean? <laughs> I'm sorry if we interrupted. It's been a while, right? Maybe you should head back and talk. I think he was happy for the I distraction. I was just a boy and yeah. haven't seen him since. I doubt that he thinks of me as his father or trusts me. I'm not even sure what to say to him. Hey, Dad! Aw, <laughs> uh, Al. I, um... I'd like to work, too. This is something that would be really satisfying to see happen. This is what Hohenheim cares about, right? He, I mean, he wanted his family. Here you go. Above everything. Al is not the one you gotta worry about. It's Ed. <laughs> Al will take him back. Al has already forgiven you. I know that already. Al wants his father. Ed, it's not gonna be so easy with him. But teaming up to fight father might help. You okay in there? How's the water feel? Amazing. <sighs> Whoa, what am I looking at? I'll leave some fresh clothes for you here. Thank you so much, Rose. Mm. She's so nice to do all this for me. I'm really impressed with you, Winry. Working as an auto mail engineer, you're so independent for someone your age. So did you design Ed's leg? That's right. That was back when we were just little kids, really. That's amazing. She's made a lot you're of the improvements. One who literally helped Ed get back on his feet again. Literally, yeah. So you indirectly helped me get back on my feet too. Cycles of goodness. I'm a little. Uh, I owe Ed an owl. This is a little weird. I'm not gonna lie. I'm like, I don't know. I don't hate it. I wasn't expecting fan service from this show. This is like it came out of nowhere. We have not gotten anything like this so far. But here we are, Winry bath scene. Might, might as well enjoy it. I can see the advertising check boxes already. Contains nudity. Animated nudity. Does that count? If you want to see Winry naked, sign up for Patreon. <laughs> Imagine nudity aside. It's a nice scene. I mean, it's not that the nudity isn't nice. The nudity is nice too. You know what I mean? This is another example of cycles of goodness, right? And I think one interesting thing about Lior is that it kind of goes back to something Ed was saying a couple episodes ago when he got injured about how he may as well start accepting the consequences of his actions. I think the understanding there is that the fact that he can see truth that other people can't see or that he's doing things that are ultimately good but really difficult or what people don't really want or resist initially because they're attached to the way they are is that he's going to be in a lot of danger and there's a lot of chaos that comes out of goodness at first in a lot of cases like this is not such a direct thing where like he did something good and then good things happen right like there was a period in between that where the whole city collapsed but to me it seems like it was something that had to happen because it was built on lies and the only way through that was going to be pain like the truth is painful the truth is especially painful when you're living a life of lies and Lior just seemed like lie on top of lie on top of lie and i think the inspiring part about that and the heroic part about that is the idea of like you know just speaking truth as you see it and doing your best personally even if there's an immediate cost right and i think that's something that ed embodies really well especially in the last couple episodes but Lior is kind of an early reflection of that i was desperate enough to believe father cornello he claimed that he could bring my boyfriend back to life and i began to blindly follow him it was just your boyfriend but then Ed got furious with me. He told me to stand on my own two feet. He said that? He can be a jerk sometimes. I don't know why it's so difficult for him to be nice. But he was being nice. That's just how much he cares. But you already know that, don't you? Huh? <laughs> he helped open our eyes. Mine and the whole town's.
I'm kind of confused. Is Rose a love interest for Ed or Hohenheim? <laughs> she can be both. <laughs> on a more serious note, I like their exchange about kindness because what is kindness in that situation? I feel like Ed was hard on her, but sometimes being hard on people is a kindness. You know, sometimes what people need most is honesty. I mean, there's a place for both, right? There's a place for pacifying people's emotions and trying to make them feel better. And there's a time for just like giving them the brutal, honest truth as you see it, especially if the, the things they're not seeing are a danger to them. In the past, when I've been in bad places, some of the most encouraging words people have ever given me was brutal, hard truth that was painful. But sometimes that's a relief. Like I said, I think there's a place for both, but I feel like we don't get enough of that aspect. We get a lot of like, you're okay, everything's fine, you're great the way you are, and not enough of like, you can do better, you know? Because they're both important. And I think they're two halves of a whole, right? Like we are good the way we are, but I think a lot of our goodness lies in the shape of potential, but potential has to be realized for it to be truly great. And so I think that's where the utility of someone like Ed telling you like, stand on your own two feet and walk or whatever. Sometimes that's something you need to hear and you can see that it obviously did a lot of good for Rose. We're learning to stand on our own and we don't need any kind of miracle to do it. It's all thanks to Ed and Al. Ed. What about Al? <laughs> Ed and Al, but Ed's missing. Where are you, Mr. Greed? You never know who's going to be important in this show. <laughs> oh, is this the army? Looks like it. The state has no interest in ethics. Oh, we saw the other side of this. Yeah, it is the army. You mentioned that souls would be bonded to them. Where do you plan on procuring these souls? From rival lands, of course. Citizens from the countries we ravaged during the course of war. For one reason or another, the battlefield serves as a hunting ground for the collection of souls. <laughs> this place is evil! Maybe you shouldn't scream like that. Mr. Green would never be in an awful place like this! <laughs> There's new greed. So, it's a countrywide transmutation circle, and you plan on destroying it. Why is he playing ignorant? So I was kind of shocked to find you here, Dad. I must have some good luck after all. Come on, Al, put two and two together. encountered a man who was identical to you in Central. I don't know how you're connected to him, but I'm guessing you at least know who he is, right? Al is me for most of the show. I'm just a little bit ahead of him now. your mind, I might be on their side. <laughs> You've given away your entire plan. Aren't you the least bit worried I might leak it to them? Poor Al. Just kidding. I'm glad <laughs> that you feel like you can still trust me. Thanks, Alphonse. Uh, sure. Even though I left them, this boy still sees me as his father and actually trusts me. Now then, I suppose I owe my sons the same trust they've given me. This won't be easy to explain. It would be for the best for Edward to hear it as well. About Actually, that. Actually, I hate to say it, but brother has gone missing. He's in a Titan. Oh, wrong show. Yeah, where is Ed? It's nice that Hohenheim is happy that Al trusts him, but what he doesn't realize is Al just trusts everyone. <laughs> yes, hello? Oh, you're soldiers. Do you need a physical? We're looking for someone. What's wrong? Tell me, were you at the bank this afternoon? Don't move! Huh? Hold it. Do you work at this doctor's office? Slowly raise your hands above your head. Have you seen anyone unusual frequenting the there he is. lately? Good to see him in good health. He's described as... Right now! Show me your hands! A red coat, blonde hair worn in a braid, and short. <laughs> oh, you messed up. Now you're dead. That doesn't want to kill except for the people who call him short. Oh, damn. Damn is right. My injuries are completely healed, and I'm revving at full throttle. Revving at full throttle. Again with the nudity. Not complaining. Stay back or he's dead. Don't force us to blow this kid's brains out. <laughs> Whoops. Revenant at full throttle. Hey, Gorilla, step on it. Don't gorilla. Don't me that. Hey, turn there. I've got an idea. What? Just shut up and turn. Ah, this a good plan. Just park the car as soon as we turn. They turn. What? What did he disguise it as? Where did they go? They must have what turned is on that? the street. What is that? Does it have there. skulls on it? Yeah, it's kind of a skull. 
Very Ed. I like the flame decal. Yeah, well, can you change it back into a normal car now? And why is that? I think this car looks cool as hell. Just change Great taste, it back. great taste. Please, we're begging you. Yeah, you guys got a problem with my sense of style? <laughs> you don't have it. I like it. At least you can't say his style's boring. So what's the next plan of action? Well, let's see. The first thing I need to do is meet up with Al. He should be with Dr. Marco by now. Well, where are they? A lot has changed. You do know how to find them, right? If I were Al, where would I go? Can you figure out Lior from that? Still awake? <laughs> if you only knew. It's just a lot. You were a slave and now you're a philosopher's stone? Right? Isn't it crazy? So, what's it like not being able to die? Well, it's... I'm not gonna lie and say it doesn't come in handy. But it's not worth watching everyone I love die before me. Like Mom. Wait, if you're a Philosopher's Stone, you don't have a normal human body, right? So does that mean Ed and I... Aren't exactly normal humans either? Yeah. You don't have to worry, Al. It's true that I have a Philosopher's Stone fused to my soul. But not even that can change the fact that I am a human being. Although, I look alike beneath Central. His body is like a leather bag that's patterned after mine. A leather bag? More or less. And if we can destroy that leather bag, then we can defeat what's inside. That makes sense. Yeah, I guess in a way, Father's body is just another container. Maybe there's more to this container thing than I thought, because that's been focused on a lot. For all we know, they might have already completed the circle. Then why are you so relaxed? Because it's not yet time. Huh? How do you know? Look up, son. You're too busy looking down when you need to look up. Huh? If you want answers, that's where you'll find them. Up? The sky? You mean the sun god Leto? The man in Central is waiting for the Day of Reckoning. What is the Day of Reckoning? And what is the connection to the sky or the sun? Is it some kind of celestial movement? I don't know what that means exactly, but it makes me think I've been thinking about things on too small a scale. I made this as a joke in a comment once. I said something like, has anyone ever noticed the earth is round? Maybe he's trying to form some kind of like solar system circle. Maybe his goals are much bigger than just the world or much bigger than humanity. <laughs> It's not the greed that you remember. Not really. Remember Ling? He was cool. You. How dare you imitate Mr. Greed? Excuse me. I'm no imitation. My name is Greed. The avaricious. You got it. The very same. You are Mr. Greed. But how can you look like someone else? I asked you who you are. Now tell me. It's me. I'm your friend, Beto. You haven't been gone from Dublin. Beto. Long to I always remembered his name. You're from Dublin. Oh, now it makes sense. You remember me? Afraid not. You must have been buddies with the previous greed. But I thought... Damn, why is so, it sad too? You and I have never even met. But, Mr. Greed, I'm your friend. It's nothing personal. I'm just doing my job. I am sorry, honestly. <laughs> what the hell? Is this Ling taking over? Or is it older version of Greed? What have you done, Greed? Are you determined to prove you're a monster? There he is! What kind of sick creature would kill his own friend? You abandoned them! Your real family! You threw them away like trash! Fool! If you turned your back on something you wanted, you don't deserve to call yourself free! Damn, he's just breaking him from the inside out. Oh my god! I went from joking about Beto being forgettable to feeling really sad about his death <laughs> in the span of like two seconds. Yes, yeah, another one! They keep I bringing him. Enjoy this one. I was just a bit older than you are the first time I read it. It's about I don't know about that. Who travels the world. <laughs> What is it? 
Nothing could be more more dangerous out there than in here. Who is it? Man, Ling really did a number on Greed. Does that mean they have a homunculus ally? He hasn't been in the picture for a really long time. But yeah, Greed slash Ling is sort of a wild card in all this. Although it seems like Ling is winning. So this episode really has me wondering about the plan. I mean, I'm always wondering about the plan, but I think that maybe my, my vision was too narrow. I've been looking down, like Hohenheim said. Maybe the world is a philosopher's stone. Maybe father wants to be containerless. And for that, you need a giant circle. And maybe that circle involves the sun. If that's true, that's kind of cool how they previewed that way, way back in the beginning with um, the sun god. I feel like going back and watching the show is going to be insane for me. Because I feel like so much of it is probably hidden in plain sight. I mean, that's definitely true for the reveals I've already gotten. Like, Pride has sort of been in plain sight this whole time, as Salim. Slave 23 was part of the opening, the first opening. Ed and Al's golden eyes, you know, there's so many things. It's all there, I'm just not seeing it. But it can't be that much longer now. <laughs> We don't have that many more episodes left. One thing I really like about these episodes recently is that we're getting a lot of plot, right? Like things are really revving at full throttle, but they're also giving us a lot of really nice character moments. Last episode, we had some great moments from Scar and Marco. This episode, we have this really beautiful interaction between Hohenheim and Al, as well as a very unexpected, but very nice scene between Rose and Winry about how Ed and Al actually did a lot of good despite, you know, short-term tragedy. These are sort of the things that I live for in this show. It's funny looking back at the show as a whole because I remember thinking this show was really traumatized you know, I remember thinking like, oh boy, this is gonna be rough. And it definitely has been at times, like with Nina Xander and the Ishmael and War and things like that. But I find that like, there's a lot more hope that it gives me than anything. I think the show does a good job establishing that early on, showing you that the evils are real, like they don't shy away from it, but then giving you through the characters, the feeling that there's so much more. It's like a really nice contrast. But anyway, that's the end of episode 44. I'll see you guys next time for episode 45, when we continue revving at full throttle.